Now I am going to tell you the story of a boatman. Now who is a boatman? A boatman is someone who has a boat, who plies that boat, who uses that boat to take people across a river in this case. Okay. So this boatman had made his own boat out of a tree trunk. So it was a long, thin boat in which eight or 10 people could sit one behind the other. And he would take them across the river. Uh, across the river, he would take people from one side to the other side. Then they would get off the boat. They would pay him something. And then those who wanted to cross to the first side would get into the boat and he would take them across. And this is how he spent his entire day taking people across this river from the left side to the right side, then back to the left side. Okay. This is how he earned his living. Now, one day there was a terrific storm and the waters of the river also were in a terrible ferment. And in that storm, the boat overturned. Luckily, at that time, there were no passengers in the boat. There was only the boatman. But the boat overturned and he fell into the water and the boat broke into many pieces. And he managed, the boatman managed to save himself by holding on to a piece of boat, a bit of the boat, and he managed to come ashore. But his boat is now broken and he has no way of earning his living. So the next day, he told, he told his wife that tomorrow I will go into the jungle and I will find a tree with the same kind of straight, big trunk, which out of which I can carve another boat. Okay. So the next day, he took a small packet of food. They were poor people. He and his wife, she just gave him some rotis, a few pieces of Nimbuka char pickle, and she made it into a little bundle. And he took that little bundle and he went into the jungle and he searched the entire day for a tree with the kind of trunk out of which he could carve another boat. But though he spent many hours in the jungle, he could not find a tree that fitted his requirements exactly. So tired, you're tired if what you have set out to do has not been accomplished, isn't it? That's a reason for being tired or extra tired. And he came home very disappointed, tired, and told his wife, I'll try again tomorrow. Today, I could not find the kind of tree I was looking for. But the second day also ended in disappointment for the boatman. The second day, <clears throat> again, he could not find the kind of tree that he really wanted. And he came back tired and disappointed at the end of the second day. Now, the third day when he got up, he found it was raining, but he had decided, I am not going to come home today without the tree that I want. And so he took his little lunch packet, which his wife got ready for him. And he went into the jungle, even though it was raining. And he searched and he searched and he searched. But he still did not find the kind of tree that he was looking for. It became evening, evening turned into night. Now he can't even go back empty handed because he's come a long distance into the jungle. And now he has to spend the night in the jungle. So what should he do? Should he climb a tree and risk falling out of the tree in case he goes to sleep and falls out of the tree? Or should he try and sleep at the bottom of a tree and risk a snake coming and biting him or some animal or being attacked by some animal. He didn't know what to do. And while he was worrying about this, suddenly to his good fortune, he saw a light shining at a distance. 
Now a light shining means perhaps that somebody lives there. So he went as fast as he could and he small, saw a small hut and there was a light. Maybe somebody had lit some candles or a lamp and inside that and that light was streaming out of the window. So he knocked on the door, tuck, 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 tuck. And a man opened the door and said, yes. And the boatman said, please, if you don't mind, can I take shelter in your hut tonight? I came into the jungle for some, something I was looking for and my work is not finished and I'm too far from home to go home and I'm scared to sleep outside here in the jungle. Can you just give me a corner in your home for one night and I'll get up early in the morning and I'll go. Yes, yes, yes. Come in by all means, the man said. Oh, the relief for the boatman. And he went into this little hut. And apart from the man who had opened the door for him, there was what seemed, who seemed to be the man's wife. And there were a few odds and ends. And they pointed to a corner and they said, Go to sleep here, go to sleep. Now he was very glad that he had found shelter for the night, but he was terrifically hungry because what had he eaten the whole day? Only those few rotis with a few pieces of pickle. That's all, Nimbuka Achar, that's all that he had eaten. And now it was night and he was terrifically hungry. Now for some time he lay there thinking that they might give him something to eat. The way we offer someone, if they come to our homes or somebody offers us when we visit them, will you have something to eat? Will you have something to drink? Don't we say that? But these people didn't say anything. So for a few minutes, he lay there and then he said, please, I'm terribly hungry. Could I just have some little, if, some little bit of food if you can spare for me? So that man said, uh, the man who had opened the door, said, you're feeling hungry? All right. You lie down, we'll, we'll arrange some food for you. Now that boatman wondered because he had seen no signs of any food or any cooking uh, arrangements when he came in to that hut. So he wondered from where are they going to give me any food? So while he was lying there, with his eyes closed, he opened one eye slightly <laughs> to see what food preparations they were going to make for him. Now that man who had opened the door, you know what he did? He didn't start preparing any food. He got up and went to a box that was lying in the corner. He opened the box. He took out a cap. He put the cap on his head and he said, let's go. And when he said, let's go, he vanished. My God, that boatman is absolutely stunned. And then the wife of the boatman, she went to that box. She opened it. She took out another cap. She put the cap on her head and she also said, let's go. And she vanished. And now the boatman is left alone in that hut and the box is still there and we don't know what's in the box. But what did he do? He went to that box. He opened it. He took out another cap put the cap on his head and he said, let's go. And he went whoo, out of the hut, flying in the cold, dark night, flying, 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 flying. Blah, he landed somewhere. Where did he land? He landed in the kitchen of a king's palace. And that was a huge kitchen and there were tables all along the sides and there was so much food. 
so much poor that this poor man could hardly imagine what he was seeing in gold and silver containers and plates and glasses and spoons. There was so much food. What was there? Now let me think. There was rajma and chawal and pulao and saag and rotis of all kinds and rice of all kinds and curries of all kinds, and drinks of all kinds. There was, uh, what was there to drink? Come on. There was sharbat of many kinds, and there was milk if you wanted it, and there was nimbu pani, and there was all kinds of things, and so many sweets. There were raskullas, and there was gulab jamun, and gajar ka halwa, and burfi of a million kinds, and my God. This boatman could not believe what he was seeing. All the cooks, after preparing this huge banquet for the king and for the king's guests, they had all gone out to change their clothes and freshen up. And uh, so who was there in this huge, beautiful kitchen except the boatman? There were two people with caps on their heads, that man and that woman from that hut, and they had, they had bags with them, they had thalas with him into which they were stuffing whatever food they could. And when they saw that he has also appeared here wearing the third hat, they touched their own caps and they said, let's go. And they both vanished and he was left alone in that room with all that food and with all that hunger in his own tummy because he hadn't eaten anything since the morning. Now, should he have eaten anything from the king's banquet? Was the food made for him? No, <laughs> it wasn't, and he knew that. But he justified his taking a little food by saying, if I just take one spoon of this and one spoon of this and one spoon of this, one little, little, little amounts if I just take, I can fill my tummy and maybe nobody will know because there is so much food here. So he just took a little this and 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 he filled a big silver plate and he sat down and he ate the best meal of his life. And then after sitting, he was so full. And he was so tired also that he lay down and he went to sleep and he started snoring. <gasps> he's lying there and he's snoring. And suddenly all the king's cooks came back, smartly dressed. And what do they find? Something has been spilt here and a plate is fallen on the ground there and some other mess here and in the middle of all this, there is a man in some uh, tattered clothing lying here with an empty plate next to him and he's snoring. And they were furious and they said, thief, 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 we have caught the thief. And they shouted at him and they dragged him up. At once he came awake and he was horrified to see that he was being considered a thief. And he said, no, no, I'm not a thief, I'm not a thief. But they did not listen to him. And they dragged him in front of the king. And they said, your majesty, we told you that there have been thefts in our kitchen for many days today. We have caught the thief. Here he is. He has been caught red-handed. And that poor man said, no, your majesty, I am not a thief. I just came by accident and I was hungry. I am not a thief. I am not a thief. But nobody paid any attention to him. And the king was very angry that there had been thefts in his kitchen and he said, take this man out, tie him to a big tree and set him on fire. That is the punishment for stealing from my kitchen. And that poor boatman was dragged out and there was a beautiful, big, strong tree and they tied him with ropes to that tree. And as they were tying him, he said, oh my God, this is just the tree I was looking for. And when have I found it? When I'm going to die.
when I am being tied to it and put to death. And he was tied to that tree and lots of twigs were collected and put around him. And now the moment a match is struck, a fire will be lit and he will be dead. And just before that, the soldiers asked him, hey, you're going to be dead in two minutes. Have you any last wish? You want us to inform your family? You want to write a letter for your mother or for your wife? Tell us what is your last wish because you're going to die. And first the boatman was quiet. And then he said, I want to die with my cap on my head. Because if you remember, when he finished eating in the kitchen, he had lain down and gone to sleep and the cap had fallen off his head. And they'd had, the soldiers had no idea what cap he was talking about, what kind of cap it was. And they all started laughing and they said, oh, oh, oh. you're going to be dead and what do you want? Your cap on your head. All right, all right, where is your cap? And the boatman said that the cap is lying in the kitchen on the floor where I was. And they said, oh, get his cap, get this stupid man's cap. And some man went running, some soldier went running and brought the cap. And because the boatman was tied, he could not put the cap on his own head. So a soldier put the cap on the boatman's head and what did the boatman say? He said, let's go straight to my home. And woo, he began to fly up to the cold, dark night air. And because he was tied to the tree, as he flew, the tree also came with him. So woo, and where did the boatman and the tree land? Right outside his house. And his wife opened the door and she came running and she said, I was so worried, I was so worried. And he said, what was there to worry about? I told you I won't come home without a proper tree and look at this lovely tree that I have brought. And it was a lovely tree. And the very next day he started carving another boat and his life started moving again. Happily, and our story comes to an end, if you like it.